What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome back to another video today. So we have a lot to do in this video. We're going to finish up the interior on Prospector Bob. I often get asked about carpet for these trucks and where to buy it from, how to install it, so make sure you stay tuned. That's what we're going to be doing near the end of the video before we install the seat, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I'll answer all your questions at that point. Um, but first of all, let's get everything prepped, ready to go, so we can get that carpet put in there. I'm going to weld up a couple of these holes that we don't need, one, two, three, on each side. Um, I'll do that real quick. Once that's done, we'll clean everything out, and then we'll finish doing the sound deadener. We need to run a hot and a ground for the power seat here, so we'll just run that right up through the firewall. That'll be easy, and uh, then we'll be ready to start moving the carpet in here. And uh, once we get carpet in, we can mount up the seats, and this thing will be ready to go. I ordered new seal plates, and I don't think they'll be here by the end of the video. So that may be one of the things that uh, we're just kind of waiting on. But besides that, this thing should be ready to go, so let's get started. All right, guys, I've got all the holes in the floor welded up. Uh, I didn't show you that because you guys have seen me grind and weld enough in the past couple weeks. But let me show you something, a little tool that I used that someone told me about. Uh, so when you're welding these little tiny holes in the sheet metal, um, what I did, I got this. Uh, it's got two magnets on it and then a copper plate here. So you put that on the underside and this copper plate just backs the hole. And I just stuck a washer in there to fill the gap and then welded it. And the copper plate's job is to absorb a lot of the heat so you don't tend to burn through the, the rim of the sheet metal as much. So that worked well. I ended up finding quite a few more holes that I did. So, you know, here, 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 got some over here. Same thing on the other side. So it uh, took a little bit, but it's all done. Looks pretty clean. Um, so now we need to get the sound deadener completely laid down on the floor. So this is the sound deadener I use. It's made by Noiko. Uh, there's plenty of different brands you can buy. I just get this out off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description if you want it. You'll need a little roller. I don't like the one I have. Um, I'll find a better one, put a link in the description for you. Um, but this is all there is to it is just uh, measuring it out, putting it where you need to. The sound deadening effect of this stuff comes from it adhering to large panels of sheet metal and keeps them from vibrating. So it's not so much about sound actually getting up through the, the sheet metal, it's from eliminating the vibrations of the sheet metal. So. Uh, I liked, I'm a fan of putting it anywhere. There's big spans of sheet metal, uh, the floors obviously. Um, so we'll get it down where we want. But for example, this cross member here, uh, that's not going to have any vibration to it. So I'm probably not going to put any on that. So, uh, some may not agree with that, but that's how I'm going to do it. So let's get this stuff laid down. This stuff's going down nicely. I'm just going to interject here to explain a couple things that I'm trying to show. Um, but you can see uh, where they have the uh, bead rolls in the floor pans. I just use the butt end of the handle and drag it through there. Sometimes there's an air bubble in there 
And in that case, I'll just take my box cutter and cut a line right down the middle. That's what I did right here. So you can't even tell, but that lets the air escape out of there. So there's no bubble in there, but uh, that whole side's done. We've got a couple little spots left here and then we will be done. So let's keep going. Alright guys, it is all sound deadened in here. Got all the little spots where I welded the holes. All ready to go for the carpet. Actually, scratch that, one more thing. We gotta run the wire for the power seat. That's just a hot wire and a ground. I'm just gonna run it off the battery right now until I put an external fuse block on this truck. But on that note, let me tell you two key things when you guys are buying uh, aftermarket seats or seats from another vehicle to put in these trucks. Two things you should always do. The first thing, uh, right here, always grab the male end of the seat belt buckle if you want to use the seat belt that goes with the seat, okay? Uh, so all I do is unstitch the first gen seat belt, take that buckle off, put this one on, stitch it back up. By I doing that, I mean my wife does that. Um, so then we have this and it works perfectly. The other thing you always need to do, if the seat's a power seat, make sure you go in and you get a hold of the uh, both ends of the plug. I had this guy cut it for me before I got there and he cut it really short, but we're gonna make this work. That just makes uh, tapping into this way easier. So then when you hook it up, all you do is plug it right in, okay? So that's how I have it on the OG crew cab. It's super convenient when I need to take it out. I just unplug this plug and it's good to go. So those are two things that you should always do if you're gonna grab seats out of another truck to put in your first gen. All right guys, we got the carpet pulled out. I'm just letting it sit on the uh, tub of the Jeep uh, just so the sun can kind of, you know, the warmth can just make it so it's a little more moldable. Uh, so real quick, I ordered this from Rock Auto, and Rock Auto sources it from Auto Custom Carpets, okay? So, the reason I didn't buy it straight from Auto Custom Carpets, even though it's the same product, it's the same price, uh, for where I live at least, Auto Custom Carpets, the shipping is way more, so I went with Rock Auto. Uh, we're gonna let it relax out a little bit, and then we're gonna put it in, so, this is the cut pile with mass backing on it. Uh, it's the most expensive one you can get. I believe this is 320 bucks, um, but it looks really, really good. This will all vacuum off. That's just from shipping. Just some of the mass backing came off on it, so. All right guys, making good progress here. So uh, let me show you, sorry, I've got a couple things just laying on the carpet, but uh, it really did sit down nicely. I did uh, cut about six inches off, off the front of it and I slid it forward. Um, so all the contours match perfectly on the trans tunnel and it's sitting on there really nicely. Uh, so I've got the shifter boot all bolted down. I've got the transfer case uh, mounting plate bolted down, but I don't have a boot for it yet. I forgot to actually run the wire. So here's the plug. I ran a red and a black wire for power and ground, put it in this sweet loom stuff. Uh, it's kind of this soft woven loom stuff. I'll put a link to this in the description below, but it's, I really like it. So I'm going to run this up to the engine compartment. The uh, carpet kit comes with two of these and basically they're these grommets that you can cut a hole to bring a wire up through. So I think what I'm gonna do is have this uh, run along the trans tunnel right here and come right up through here. Uh, I think that'll be 
kind of the least noticeable spot, but this isn't very thick wire anyways. So, so I'm gonna do that. And then once I get that done, uh, I'm gonna get underneath, drill up through the carpet where the holes for the um, seat bracket are, uh, and we can mount the seats up. So <laughs> it's kind of surreal, but this is going a lot better than I thought it would. Um, so let's keep going. All right, guys, that is a lot for one day. I mean, I, I took my time doing it all. It wasn't hard, but I took my time to do it all very nicely. So I've got the power cord run through here, up here, over here, through the firewall. And then, yeah, you can see, there it is. All installed. I have new door seals for all four doors for both trucks on the way. So I'm gonna call it a day for today. Tomorrow we're gonna to come out, we're gonna mount up the seat brackets, mount up the seats, get everything uh, done that we have parts for, uh, and then I'll show it to you guys, I'll reveal it. So this should look really good. Hang tight and we'll get this all buttoned up. All right guys, it's a couple days later um, and I was actually editing the video and I decided to do something more to the interior of this truck during that time. So, uh, I ordered some, this is some closed cell foam by Noiko. Um, again, it's not the nicest stuff out there, but it was like 45 bucks for a box and the box does 36 square feet. So I got two boxes, which will be plenty for this cab. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show you guys this, but I'm gonna kind of pull the, the carpet back up, uh, kind of take some steps backwards, put this all in on the whole floor and the back wall and then put the carpet back in, get back to where we're at at this point, and then we'll get the seats installed. So for you guys, it's just a blink of an eye, but for me, it's gonna be, I don't know, maybe an hour or two more of work, but I think it'll be well worth it. So I'll put a link to this stuff in the description as well, in case you're interested in using it as well. All right guys, that was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. So let me show you guys the finished interior of Prospector Bob. Now when I say finished, there's a couple more things I still need. I need door seals, seal plates, a couple other things that I'm still waiting on to arrive. But for now, you can enjoy what it is. It turned out really nice. So let's go check it out. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was a lot of work, but one of my favorite things to do with these trucks are the interiors. Um, I think it's therapeutic. I think you can find some really good options for seats and other things uh, that aren't too expensive. Uh, this thing turned out super nice. It's a blast to drive. 
We've got some more work to do on it in some upcoming videos. So in the next couple weeks, we're gonna work more on the Prospector. We're also gonna work on the OG Crew Cab as well, and we gotta finish up Lieutenant Dan. So we have a lot to do over the next couple weeks and months. I hope you guys are enjoying the content here. Make sure to like this video if you haven't yet, and subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you guys in the next video.